Hi everyone, welcome back. It's a beautiful day here. And going forwards, as well as making videos here in my own garden, I want to travel to more inspirational gardens. I want to visit other growers, other passionate plants people, share their stories and experiences. I want to look at other suppliers, nurseries, the people who grow the most exciting plants we can buy here in the UK today. And today's story very firmly ticks all three of those boxes. Today, we're going to dirt cheap plants over near Sheffield. Janet and her husband set up dirt cheap plants actually during the pandemic. A lot of their efforts, as they were at home like a lot of people were, were focused on producing masks and they had so many people come into the house to pick up all these masks and a lot of these people were immediately impressed by the garden. A beautiful jungle garden packed full of amazing tropical plants. There's so many fantastic colourful flowers in there. You can't help but not be inspired by it. And a lot of those people ended up going home purchasing some plants as well. Janet is a big fan of propagation. There's so many banana plants, gunnera, tetrapanax, and a lot of the cool exotics that I enjoy growing and talking about too. There's just so many plants there. But today's video, it's nothing commercial. I thought I'd go back to where it started and see what really inspired those first customers. I thought I'd take you on a trip around Janet's incredible tropical garden. Tucked in around the back of a fairly ordinary house is this dense jungle full of huge exotics. There's one palm in particular that's incredibly rare. I've never seen another one growing myself here in the UK. So sit back, enjoy this one, a look around the dirt cheap plants garden, and then at some of the exciting plants to sell in afterwards. And one last thing before we get right on into it. Janet believes the success of dirt cheap plants so far, they've had so many repeat customers, just check out the Google reviews if you don't believe me, is because they provide a completely different shopping experience to most big stereotypical garden centres. We're often expensive, huge, exotic specimen plants could be lined up, and the staff don't necessarily have the expertise to share with you some growing tips or even be able to tell you if they're gonna survive and thrive in your garden, which is a big thing if you're gonna spend that much money. Janet offers a completely different service from actually going into the garden first, being inspired by all these incredible plants, seeing different combinations together, and actually realizing what they can grow in their garden can grow at yours too. They're based between Sheffield, Rotherham, and Worksop, so it's not a part of the country that's especially mild or sheltered. If they can grow it there with minimal winter care, then you can probably grow it too. And from that, they provide the full package. Even if you're a more experienced grower and you have some really unusual rare plants, they have customers send them lists of the plants they want and they manage to source them. Not guaranteed every time, but if you send a list over, Janet is a very determined lady. She goes to a lot of places, she knows a lot of plant sellers, and I'm sure she'll do her best to get it for you. Anyway, I hope her passion for plants really shines through in this video. I enjoyed making it, I enjoyed seeing the garden, and I hope you enjoy watching it too. I was not expecting to see this behind your house. Tell me about some of your favorite plants in here. My favorite plants are Colocasia well, pink china. These ones here? Yep, um, we've been able to leave them in in winter. Yeah. And the tetrapanax for the fantastic canopy. That does look awesome, that one. Um, How old is that tetrapanax, roughly? I'm not sure because I bought it with a woody stem already, but I've had that in garden two years. Right, okay, got you. So we've got through two winters. That is actually one of my favourite plants at home. Obviously, you had a cold winter like us last time round, but it sprouted back, hasn't it? Yeah, luckily for me, um, I didn't get a mushy stem yeah. and it didn't shoot from the bottom. Got you. We've had lots of foliage from the top and I've cut quite a lot off because it's in way at path. Got you. So, yeah, 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 there's still a lot being cut off that. So, presumably, this one here, you planted it next to the path so it creates a sort of massive canopy in the future. Yeah, reach, you're actually going to be walking under these huge leaves, aren't you? Yeah, that's but, the idea. No. The first canopy tree. Um, was the mimosa and then I tried to carry it on uh, with the tetrapanax. No, it looks very cool. I mean, looking back here, a lot of these plants are the plants I've recommended in my other previous videos, fast growing filler plants if you like. And I think really here, they look just so beautiful together. You've got so many bright colors. So what are the flowering plants you've got here? Because I know people will be interested in those. Well, we've got ginger plants yeah. and then crocrosmia. Um, there's uh, persicara that are good filler plants. Yeah. They spread a lot, but they're easy to pick up and pull and move around. It stops the weeds from coming up so much, which we don't get anymore. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the same with our garden. When you've got this sort of dense jungle plant in, there just isn't the room, is there, for the no. weeds to actually pop up. This, to me, looks like more of a summer planting border. So most of these plants do die down in winter, don't yeah. they? And a lot like the gingers there. Do you leave that in the ground all winter? Yeah, the ginger stays in ground all winter. That's cool. Uh, we just mulch it over. But yeah. obviously, the um, the canna and the gingers... Yeah. 
and the Agapanthus. Um, this is almost bare in winter because all the Persicoras, the Colocaceas, they all die down. Yeah. I mean, you must get people just seeing this and thinking, how do you get away with these plants in winter? I guess, really, you've grouped a lot of the similar plants together, so you can just easily put a mulch over the whole area, yeah. except that it looks bare, but it's just nice and easy way of having so much colour, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this area, I'm, yeah. I mulch all the garden, but this area, I might put like a bit of straw on it yeah. because it's got similar plants that need similar protection. It makes it easier to look after in winter. Got you. No, I, I like that. So, so when you're first looking at the garden if you're new to plants and gardening, it can seem like such a proper jungle. There's so many different plants, it can be a bit confusing, but I suppose you've, you've naturally sort of split them up into, this is an area that's more about the summer look, it's easily looked after in winter and you can just leave it to do its thing, can't you? Yeah. And then you're further down the garden, you've tried to create more sort of shade. But before we head down there, I thought I'd look at some of these cool plants in here, including a very unusual gunner at the back there. Is that one of those plants that you just have to have? Yeah, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't yeah. have space for it, but I just have to, have, just have, it. to have it. Yeah, it's Another going somewhere like... in a pot for now. Got you. And we were talking before, you know, every sort of passionate plantsman or woman or gardener, they all have a list of plants that they absolutely have to have. And to me, plants like that Gunnera deserve to be on it, don't they? Just rare oddities, unusual plants. Yeah, and the list just gets longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, the more you see it. on Facebook groups or you see on a forum, yeah. the list gets longer and longer. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and it, it doesn't end. <laughs> no. <laughs> So as we head through, we've got some Aurelias here, haven't we? They're, I guess, sort of shrubby trees, aren't they? Yeah, but, look good in autumn. Yeah. Nice changing colours. Oh, you can very see spiky. That. Devil's walking stick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Worse so than roses. Probably not one to plant right next to the path, is it, really? Yeah. We've got a little robin friend coming up to see us yeah, there. Got, that's what we think. We've got a nest oh, in wow. bamboo, yeah. Yeah, oh, shall we bump into them later on? So this is Musa sicamensis, isn't it? This one here. Yeah. Which is a banana I've grown in the past. I lost my plant at the old house when we had a bit of a cold snap. But you think this one is actually particularly hardy. You're, you're a big fan of it? Yep. This is second year in garden. Yeah. Overwintered at minus eight, minus nine. Wow. Front past winter. Yeah. And it's come back fantastic. And we've got pups. That last year, that were just one. One. About four or five foot banana. That, that, that is impressive. That. So, so how do you actually wrap it? Or is it a... How do I wrap it? Um, yeah. Put canes... Yep. Put canes around it yeah. and then shrink wrap around the canes. Yeah. You can use chicken wire, yeah, but yeah. I find it safer and yeah. cheaper to use shrink wrap. Got you. Cut all the leaves off and then stack straw, pack it all around the stems yeah. and then shrink wrap the top. Then if we've got an empty planter or an empty bin anywhere, we'll just stick that on top for good got measure. You. No, that's awesome. And I remember seeing one of Yorkshire Chris's posts, I think on Facebook, he was saying that even though it's been a cooler summer, Sycamensis for him has actually grown really well. And I think yours is definitely sort of yeah. mirroring that, isn't it? That's some fantastic growth considering how great it's been for a lot of the summer months. Yeah, we've not had that much of a summer, yeah. So if I, if I turn around here, now this here is, is a plant that, I know a lot of people enjoy Gunra. This is a great alternative to it, isn't it? Yeah, Ruam, Chinese rhubarb. Yes. The big leaves, they look fantastic there. I think you were saying earlier in the season, it has some absolutely huge leaves, a metre leaves plus across. Twice as big as what's on it now. Yeah. Um, and we went on holiday and we came back and it were covering the man gaves and <laughs> oh, it were yeah. all over it. But they were yeah. that big had to cut them back because I need some sun on some bits. Um, and it's just kind of established with more, well, smaller leaves, although they're not small. But yeah. yeah, the leaves actually overtook the gunner, they were that wow. big. I enjoy seeing gardens where everything just looks like a proper sort of tropical jungle paradise, but I think there's a lot of lessons to come from this as to how to plant to get this look without a lot of winter effort. Here, you've grown a lot of the sort of key hardy exotics, like those trachycarpus there. Was it your intention to put like your structural plants in first and then work your way out from there, or is it, has it just evolved? There were no real planning to yeah. start off with, like that were a freebie off gum tree many years ago that we dug up. Um, it looked sad for about three years, but now it looks fantastic. Yeah, and then like we used does. to have a duck pond here. Right. So none of, none of this were here a few years ago. So no. we've kind of worked around the tree because we know how sad the tree looks when you dig it up. Yes. So it weren't going anywhere. So we've worked around it. Excellent. I'll put some pictures up showing how this area sort of evolved because I think it's great to see how fast you can actually develop this kind of look really. And to me, this whole sort of jungle tropical style is very rewarding if you're new to gardening because you get such instant impact. And also if you're getting on a bit, you get to see these plants growing really quickly, don't you? So like the trachycarpus there, that definitely hasn't hung around, has it? No. Um, and when it comes to sort of transplanting, presumably you got as much of the root ball as you could. We got all the root ball because yeah. it was in absolute <laughs> solid clay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, we barely could move it. It was in absolute solid clay. We couldn't <laughs> dig it out. It. We had to pull it out with the van. Um, so yeah, we got all the root ball. 
And have you done anything sort of special to look after that, or has it just sort of grown well itself? Is no, it just it's just off? grown well. Um, yeah, that's impressive. I do have a bit of a mix what I feed Gordon myself. Yeah. And it's a big barrel, and myself, I put liquid nitrogen in it, and I put magnesium in it, liquid seaweed in Got it. You. So, so and everything they've sort of really need bananas to, and yeah. everything gets fed that and the bananas we shred bananas and the banana leaves got you that's similar what i do to mine yeah. sort of chop all the old leaves off in autumn and then just put just, them on the surface yeah, rip yeah. them up and excellent it helps get a really sort of rich soil doesn't it yeah so any bananas from yeah. supermarket that are discounted 10 p we buy them all oh, and we just bananas. yeah we just mulch them and put them in bananas <laughs> there we go <laughs> plenty of nutrients um, so I think probably another thing you said there is actually really helpful. You waited a few years for the palm to bounce back and that's probably the crucial thing, isn't it? Like a lot of these plants do grow fast, but if you're digging a plant up, if you're transplanting something, they need a few years to settle in, don't they? Yeah. And it seems like a long time, but in the scheme of things, a few years goes by like nothing, doesn't it? And then to complete the sort of look, I see there's a lot of normal sort of hardy plants like the ferns, the hostas. There's plenty of plants in here that you can get from, you know, regular garden Normal centers garden if you want centers. to. Exactly. Yep. And then there's a few sort of really cool exotics that I know you're a big fan of selling here. So we'll show people around this bit here. Down here, you've got more sort of conventional shady area woodland plants. You've got some really great ferns in there. You've got the hostas. You've got the persicaria. That's one I grow at home. And I just think it, that purple works so well with the other green leaves around it. But there's a couple of plants here that I think you wanted to tell us more about. Well, a few actually. What's this plant here? Uh, Chefrilla rhododendronifolia. Got you. It's actually started to get some berries, maybe, forming there after the flowers, so we'll see. But looking up here, there is one plant that towers over them all. <laughs> this is another Trachycarpus, and has this grown from a small plant, or is it another transplant? No, that is one that were, um, that were dug up in a big house in Leeds, oh, right, and okay. it was too close to the house. Yeah. So they dug it up with a mini digger, and uh, we went and collected it um, in Avavoro. Right, we okay. shrink wrapped the top, although it took three years to pull round. Yeah. Most of the foliage, even the odd tatty bits, might be what's left, but it's fish here, it's had a decent canopy. Yeah, it was an so, absolute nightmare to transport. <laughs> yeah, but it is. Nightmare to get to the most yeah. furthest, awkwardest point in garden, but yeah. that's the only, only place where it had worked. Always the way, is it? Always and it's the good, way. yeah, yeah. So I think the crucial lessons are, if you want a cheap tracky carpus, if you're not afraid to put the effort in, and if you've got a vehicle that can move it, it's still a great way of adding that into the impact of your garden, as long as you're prepared to wait a few years for it to look at its absolute best. Yeah. Speaking of plants where you don't have to wait for that instant impact, this is a miscanthus here. Is um, it a Gigantius, this one? Uh, yeah. Um, we, di uh, dies back in winter. Yeah. Uh, we just leave the foliage, it just protects that area a little bit. And then after that last frost, we just clear it all out, and then all that's growth in one year. Excellent. So really, I mean, that's sort of two and a half metres plus tall. Yeah, um, easy. Yeah. So it's a great plant for people wanting to create the sort of jungle tropical look without any worries in winter because that yeah, survives anything, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Um, and also just how much growth you can get out of something in a season. And I suppose probably the other factor is it's not going to be invasive and spread around like no, a bamboo, which is a really nice important. It's alternative to yeah. donax or bamboo. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But obviously not evergreen. And on to a garden visitor who would actually enjoy a bamboo plant. That panda is huge, isn't it? <laughs> Tell me a bit more about that. Like, how did you actually get that in the garden? It actually came through the fence. We took our truck oh, down right. next door's drive. Yeah. And we put it in the fence, but it was a very random purchase. <laughs> yeah. But this area recently had kids trampoline, but they never used it. They didn't want it. Oh, yeah. So we took it down. We built a wildlife pond. <laughs> we built the pond, and then I seen it in a garden centre, and it was a wow. And if it's a wow, <laughs> yeah. it's got to come home. But it was quite difficult because we had to manoeuvre it yeah. um, up a ledge from next door and then around the pond with a few choice words trying to get I, it in I, place. I can imagine. I mean, I think we all know an impulse garden centre purchase, but that, yeah. that is certainly <laughs> something else, isn't it? Six foot tall, it's huge. But going back to the plants, we can't not talk about this huge tree fern there. That is absolutely awesome. I mean, how tall is that? I think it's 11 foot. Wow. I mean, that, that is impressive. And I know you were saying before we started filming that that is a new planting. So this year, the crown, I mean, it still looks amazing, but next year, hopefully, that's going to look just incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And no. they, the posts there, uh, they are post-created in with it being such a massive cool. tree. It's yeah. great to see someone who's actually done a proper job, you know, actually staking it, because it is 11 yeah. foot, it's heavy, isn't it? So you've, you've properly put the posts in there, yeah, it's yeah. tied to it. You're not, you're not messing around, are you? No, it's a lot of money. You don't want it damaged. You don't want no, no one killed. So, <laughs> no. so, yeah, it has to be well staked. Definitely not. I know you've trans well, you transformed this area really quickly, haven't you? What are some of the sort of key plants down here? I mean, is that Colocasia? Is that Pink China again at the base yeah, yeah. there? And the Red Flamingoasa, yeah. which I think is amazing. Yeah. 
and I've had aces in Gordon before and they get, I'm struggling with them with the wind yeah. and with sun scorch. That one, nothing phases it. And I really like the colour because it just jumps out at you. Oh, definitely. And you've got that same sort of red as the um, yeah. Ensetti leaves there, haven't you? And it's also got the same greens as the pink china next to it. So I, I enjoy seeing, I think, more and more gardens that aren't just tropical or just jungle. You know, people that actually experiment with different plants and yeah. combine sort of different sort of genres or groups of plants together really successfully. But that being said, you've still got some of the sort of hardy exotic favourites, like the Fatsia japonica there. Yep. I mean, that, again, it's a plant I've talked about loads of videos really cheap to buy when it's in small sizes and it just grows so well doesn't it they grow really quick yeah. evergreen you can hard chop them back yeah i mean i've tried trimming many a times all the bottom leaves off Got try you. and get it in a canopy yeah and it's like no yeah. thank you i'll just, <laughs> just grow up bushier just and wider growing. and bigger in yeah. any way i want <laughs> so as we head round, i see quite a few more that i grow myself but there is a plan that i don't grow and i don't think many people who watch this video will have seen before tell me more about this well, the cocoa palm, the yes. green palm, we've overwintered it for two winters. Yeah. And the first winter did fantastic. We wrapped it in hessian. Yeah. And we wrapped it in fleece. And then we put a heated cable around it. I'll get you to like full on heated protection yeah. to get so it through the freezer. When we stayed yeah. the tree fern at the side, we ended up putting electrics on back of the post on the tree fern. Ah, Ricky. Okay. Ah, there we to go. To heat the Sneaky. cocoa palm. Yeah. First winter, overwintered, done good. Yeah. And then we got a couple of leaves that year. And then the winter that's just gone, came down the garden and I thought one leaf looks a bit bent Ooh. and then the next day I thought another one looks a bit bent and then the um the thermostat had malfunctioned and it oh had heated dear. the tree too much and it had burnt all the trees so all my hair were covered in ashes oh it had burnt all the hessian all the fleece I can see and that you can still see some of the sort of blackened trunk can't you yeah for a few weeks I were reluctant to pull the top because I didn't want to know yes I can imagine yeah and then eventually I did and I thought it were a goner and then I came but, down the garden um, earlier on this year and we'd got green at the top. Wow. And it's pulling <laughs> through. So, yeah. So this that year, really we will just put a heated cable around the trunk. Yeah. Just hessy on the top and just leave it like that and keep us fingers crossed. So just for people who don't know about these, most of the plants in your garden here, they are either hardy exotics or plants you can mulch over and they come back in the spring. Yeah. But this is one of those plants that's on your list, isn't that's it? That's it. That were on my list <laughs> yeah. and it's an exceptional plant that yeah. isn't hardy here that no. takes more looking after. Yeah. Yeah. Hence Can't why it. the heated cable, it's the thing that needs more looking after most. Got you. I mean, I can do, well, I've done video after video all about the really hardy, tough plants, but when people really get into this whole exotic jungle or tropical look, they tend to have a few plants that they really want to grow you know regardless of you know what you need to do to grow them and that one it's definitely a, a cool plant worth persevering with those queen palms I, I mean they can take a frost can't they but but certainly not like a prolonged freeze yeah yeah right. yeah so let's show you a bit more of this bit so we've got the gunner up there but down here we've got a few of my favorites we've got another purse carrier that one is purple fantasy there yep. And then this, I believe that's Begonia grandis, isn't it? Yep. Which, hardy begonias is something I haven't talked about a lot to my channel, but they're a great plant for shade. They're really good doers, aren't they? Um, yeah, they, they spread good. You get a good clump from them as well. Definitely. Yeah. So, so you can put like one in, in spring, and it forms a nice clump, but then they start popping up around it, don't they? Yeah, so, and they're easy to take out as well if they're... Yeah. Yeah, if there's too many. And I know with my videos, I've probably said in quite a few of them that you should really go for the bright, bold colours to make a proper tropical garden. But I think, really, that begonia just fits in perfectly, doesn't it? The pink's quite gentle. It fits in with the sort of shady planting, doesn't it? Yeah. And the cool thing about these is the underside of the leaves, just how you know beautifully sort of yeah. wine red they are. They are lovely plants, definitely. So as we head around a bit more this way, we've got a lot of your trachycarpus. These are stock plants, these, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and this generally is a size that I recommend people starting out with because it's a good balance between spending money and getting that instant impact, isn't it? Yeah. But I know you get a lot of people wanting the larger sort of six, seven foot high plants, you know, for that real sort of instant impact and sort of wow effect. What have we got here? We've got Musa Baju and then also Sycamensis. Yeah, yeah, a mix. A few stock plants, what, um, yep. what we take pups off and then my big clumper Mushabaju behind. Those are doing a lot better than mine. <laughs> mine are sort of somewhere about like that height this year, but... I think the problem is we've only been at our garden since 2020 and they were quite small plants. I think I planted them in 2021, so they didn't really have that sort of base, whereas yours are... I mean, do you protect these at all or do you just... Yeah, yeah, same as the, yeah. same as the Sycamentis. You, you put and the effort in a yeah, straw. Yeah. Got yeah. you. So, so I think probably the lesson is there's people like Mark, who's in my other videos, who don't protect theirs at all and they come back pretty well. But if you're willing to put the effort in and wrap them up with straw, you can get a lot more height, can't you? You're definitely a better looking plant. 
so it's certainly sort of worth it. Most customers, they yeah. want foliage. Got you. Oh, that's, that's interesting to know. Hardy don't want don't want to look after a lot of like, a lot like of the, the sort things of in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like tracky carpus, like humulus, and things that you can leave out, like your tetrapanics, your pink shiny, you. your bits like that. No, that's interesting to know because and ferns. We sell a lot of ferns. Yeah, tree ferns and ferns. Got you. Yeah, yeah. see out the front. Well, we'll show people shortly. You've got loads of different sort of potted smaller plants, haven't you? I think probably one of the most amazing things about your setup is that. You said it, your, your customers appreciate this. They can come in here, they can see the plants that you can buy. You've got different tables around the place, but it's when you sort of walk through and it suddenly hits you, doesn't it? Like this full on jungle garden. You said when you first sort of started this, I know obviously the, the events of the pandemic, you had your PPE factory, I guess. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah, crazy, um, yeah. You, you did some good things to help a lot of people. And it was as a result of a lot of those people coming to collect the masks from here that they saw this garden and basically asked, you know, can we buy some of these plants? And from there on, it sort of spiraled, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, do you sell plants? Yeah. And it were like, no, we don't sell plants. And then that yeah. many people asked and we were short of money. So we started splitting the garden yeah. and one thing led to another and that's how we came about. No, it, it really is impressive. And I know there's so many garden centres where you can see a lot of these plants sort of potted up, lined up, but they don't necessarily have the knowledge. Whereas it's great, I imagine, to come to a place like this where you can help people you've got the time to show them around the garden and they know that these plants can actually thrive you know in the sort of sheffield rotherham you know workshop area they can take the cold here can't they and you can have this look by the end of summer it really does look amazing yeah, yeah. it does help that we invite everyone anyone can come and have a look around on an open day or no, that's cool via appointment and no, i think it's definitely inspirational and it's great to be able to buy a plant and think i know where that's come from I can see it growing it's here. It's going to look like that. Exactly, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. you've got a few tips of how to look after it through the year. Um, no, it really is amazing. So let's show people more of the sales area. <laughs> but looking at the back there, <laughs> all those banana plants there. Do you sell a lot of banana plants? A huge amount of banana plants. Yeah. Yeah. More it's... so, more so mushabaju. Yeah. And then sycamentis. Got you. But there's Ensetis, the lotus one. There's yeah. some Thai black bananas, which I've put in the garden this year, oh, which I'm cool. going to dry store for yeah. something different. Because when they mature, I like the stems and they're nice and black. It just stands out. Something a little bit different, isn't it? There's not many plants that are black. No, no, no. So no. I'm looking forward to them getting bigger. So as we head through this archway, do you mind if we show people some of the stock you got for sale out the front? No, no, that's fine. I mean, there's a bit of all sorts, isn't there? So look at this bit here. I like that, made out of sleepers, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit hidden now, because <laughs> anywhere that's not utilised, it's got plants in it. It's a it's a sort of true plants person's garden where everything gets covered in plants, doesn't it? Yeah. The pots just invade. So we've got some kiwi vines there, which have got a great sort of tropical look to them, haven't they? Yeah, Fantastic. I like kiwi vines, nice big leaves. Yeah. And also, if you've got quite a small garden, to get that sort of jungle look like you've got here, it's about sort of using every space, isn't it? So yeah. you've got that sort of vertical interest, they can grow really well. Then looking through, we've got loads of agaves. They grow up pretty rapidly, but great for a pot, aren't they? If you just want something more yeah, exotic yeah. for a, a sort of container garden. We've got some cool pines here, which you don't see every day. I planted one um, behind Gunnera yeah. because I plan on making it a shady area for the Gunnera got and creating a canopy. I think the pine canopy, the dapple shade, yeah. like the mimosa, would be a nice canopy. Got you. So and we had to keep one of them. It's really strange that pines fit in in an exotic garden, yeah. but it's like... Um, I, I've got, in fact, I cut them down. I did have roses over the arch. Yeah, yeah. But roses kind of fit in. Oh, yeah. Honeysuckle, there's lots of things what fit yeah. in, which what you wouldn't think that would fit. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, if you like it, put it in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you like it, put it in. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's a catchphrase, <laughs> isn't it? There, you've got that spider's web fatty japonica. I think that works really well, doesn't it? So it's all about the greens, really, isn't it? Yeah, you can't have enough greens. Exactly. So as we head round, I think the can't have enough greens definitely applies to this. <laughs> so this, this used to be a sort of lean-to on the side of your house and it's now been taken over, hasn't it, by the Yeah, everything's the been took over, yeah. So here we've got a few plants that I guess are really popular this year. So which fatsia are those ones there? Uh, fatsia camouflage. Oh. That were a list plant. Yes, <laughs> a list plant that you've used the opportunity to yeah. buy a load and sell them on as well. I thought if it's my list plant, it might be somebody else's that, list plant. That is good thinking. Yeah. And up here we've got Scheffler of Taiwaniana, haven't we? They're another plant that's on a lot of people's lists and these are like good strong plants, aren't they? Nice sort of trunks coming through. I presume you give them a bit of care, you know, here in this sort of like unheated lean-to, don't you, in winter, just while they're this size, just to get them yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit sort of healthier. Um, in the winter these would stay under here. Got you. Yeah, this size, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's the general way that I yeah. sort of recommend it is if you buy them this size, I would sort of grow them on in the pot for maybe another year or two just so they get a nice woody trunk and then plant them out in the garden and you don't have the yeah. worries, do you? They might be all right this size in garden, but for sake of another year. Exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's worth putting the time in, isn't it? 
you have literally got the perfect sort of planned storage place here, but you've filled it all with stock to sell, haven't you? So, yeah. Um, looking through here, I mean, we've got loads of canners. Cleopatra, isn't there? Again, that's one of my favourites. Yeah, it's my favourite. Yeah, I just love the foliage on them. you got that sort of mixture, haven't you, of the yeah. burgundy and Even the green. Even if they didn't flower, the leaves are lovely. Yeah. And then here, we've got some more of the more bananas. There's bananas Can't everywhere, have bananas. isn't there? <laughs> Nice. Bananas is one of my favourite, can you tell? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sure you get a lot of people buying them who they didn't come in for bananas, but they see them and think, yes, no, I'm going to have a see the big leaves and it's like, yeah, oh, they tie black on end. They're very, very Longest slim stems. looking. The yeah. leaves are more elongated Got and you. when they're bigger, it's the black stem that's nice. Got you. It's, I mean, do they start getting that black stem soon? Is that... Yeah, presumably once they get sort of this size, they'll start colouring up, won't they? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're looking darker than what they were when they were smaller. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting it over winter in them. I'm going to, I think I'm going to dry store one. Yeah. And I think I'm going to take the couple of smaller ones in the house Got and have you. them as house plants over winter. Yeah. And then plant them and see how we do next year. Now, spot on. So, so even when you grow as many plants as you do, it's still about experimentation that find the easiest and yeah, most yeah. reliable way of sort of overwintering things. I but, never try and just do one yeah. thing with one plant. If we can dry store or do something else, just in case one fails or something happens, we've got a backup. Definitely. And you have got little tips in there, so... There we are, like the Baju there, winter hardy bananas, wrap outside. And it's helpful. I think so often when you get into this whole exotic garden sort of hobby, you know, passion, it's easy to just look at plants and think, I know what to do with that, or I can guess what to do with that. But you get a lot of customers here who literally haven't grown many of these plants before. And just a little bit of helpful advice goes yeah, a long yeah. way, doesn't it? We'll make sure everyone knows how to look yeah. after what they've what they're buying or yeah. sometimes what they've bought they've bought something from somewhere else and then yeah. it's like hang on a minute you yeah. need to do this it's a hardy banana but that don't mean that you can just leave it or some people do but i'm not that brave <laughs> <laughs> no I, I get you looking through here then you've got examples of many of the plants i've seen growing in your garden but you sell them so it's very easy for people to get the inspiration from the back and then buy a few of these after they've visited isn't it here i mean more persicaria there they serve seven pound those ones that's yep. a very reasonable price for you can plant this out in spring and by midsummer you'll have loads of it exactly you've got a big clump you'll never so. want any more no that's yep. it so. you'll be fetching them back yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great investment plan isn't it if you're looking to start your garden yeah looking down here you've talked about ferns you've got a great range here including some bigger tree ferns as well which do look awesome i think plants like this are what really brings a jungle or tropical garden together because it's not just about having big specimen plants. It's about the space in between, isn't Padding it? Padding it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not tropical foliage, tropical looking foliage. Yeah, got you. Yeah. And, and that's the key for really having a garden that, that looks tropical, but doesn't take a huge amount of work in winter. And also, not just buying one. If you just buy one of those, plonk it in the ground, it looks like a fern. If you buy a few and have them spread around the place, it suddenly feels like a proper genuine environment, doesn't it? Yeah. A, yeah, really sort of well-established garden. So we've got more gunners there. We've got some bigger tree ferns, haven't we? I guess you sold most of them this summer, haven't you? Yeah, we sold a lot. We sold out. Uh, we just fetched oh. some more yesterday. So, and we are getting more in soon, but yeah, they fly out pretty quick. I can imagine. We've got some bigger trachycarpus there. Loads of grasses. So I actually quite like the way you've got, for each big plant, you've got the accessory plants to go with it. So like, if you if you wanted a big tree fern, you've got to have some smaller ferns yeah. as well, haven't you? And if you want a big palm, you've got some of the different grasses here bit of everything well we don't actually have that much shade i've had to create shade around the back got you so this is the shady area in the afternoon this is all i've got a back end the house so this is why we put this up ah got you and yeah, all yeah. shade stuff's here got you so do you so find it sort of helpful to people where you can say these are the shade plants it these is are the... yeah got i've got only you. done that this year and when people want shade plants it's like they're all in one area got you most of the tropical stuff is yeah. full sun got you or so, it can take full sun quite easily yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um so yeah it's nice to have a shady area definitely miscanthus grasses i guess that's sort of gigantic again isn't it from, yeah, the, yeah. from the big clump there so those that's a great plant if you want to put something in the ground if you've got screening i mean obviously it's only summer screening but if you want something to you know line a boundary with something at the back of a border miscanthus grasses very easy come up reliably in spring they don't need a lot of care do they at no, all once they're established they don't need a huge amount of water the more water you give them the less sort of yellowy leaves you get at the base of them but Really, if you put these in the ground, in summers like this one, we've had plenty of rain, they'll look lush, green, and amazing without any work at all. You've got a bigger camera up there, haven't you? I mean, that really is a sort of prized specimen, that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. I had it up for sale, but I'm kind of getting attached to it. It's <laughs> yeah. a bit of a feature piece. Yeah, <laughs> I can't blame you if you want to hang on to that one. It is a nice specimen. Got more sort of smaller tracky carpets there. So whatever your sort of budget or, you know, size of the garden you're starting with, there's something for you here. Got some yucca restratas. And these are again a plant that grows surprisingly quickly so if you start with this size it's a great size you're not spending a ridiculous amount of money 
and then they size up nicely, don't they? Yeah, but yeah. they do need a good sort of good bit of sun, nice drainage, and they grow away well. And then heading up here, we've got some more, well, more palms, more bananas, loads of tetrapanaks in, haven't we? I imagine they've been a good seller for you this year, haven't they? Yeah, they have, yeah. It, do you find it's one of those plants that sort of grabs people as a beginner, or is it people who just come here for tetrapanaks? Uh, we had a few that have come for tetrapanics, but yeah. a lot of people, a lot of my customers, yeah. don't seem to know about them. Got and then you. when they've seen what I've got in back garden, That's it. like the yeah. polywonia trees, it's like, what is that one? And that, this is what it is. And they don't actually think that it's the same plant. The Brahira Mata there, the blue Hesper palm, Mexican palm. I mean, that one is a, a stunner, isn't it? If that ends up being a show plant as well, I don't really mind. <laughs> I can see There's the a few things going. that you get attached yeah. to, yeah, and you're sad to see them go, yeah, and that's going to be one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see that ending up in a big pot and being sort of stood there with some lights behind it yeah. or something. <laughs> Definitely. And then looking around this side here, you've got a bit of a mixture of all sorts. You've got some Brugmantia there, just starting to flower, and some more huge Trachycarpus. I guess these have been a good seller this year, haven't they, these ones? Yeah, Trachycarpus are always a good seller. Yeah, Definitely. we have been hard in winter down to minus 15. Some people, especially people with new homes and things, yeah. instant impact. What we tend to find is um, a lot of customers that are starting a new garden, they tend to buy two or three big things, get the structural things yeah. in. So as when they're doing the garden, it actually feels like they've got somewhere and they've got a bit of a start. Yeah. And then I, we'll I work you. with rest after. As much as I've done videos talking about how you can start, you know, without spending a lot of money and being on a budget, there's a lot to be said for having two or three really big plants. It sets the tone, doesn't it? Yeah. You're not waiting. And I think if you've got a few track carpets in like this kind of size, straight away the garden, it just feels like a garden, doesn't it? And yeah. then, then you can experiment with other sort of ferns and fast growing sort of filler plants around them. And suddenly you've got a tropical garden, haven't you? It, yeah, yeah. In fact, shall we pop through again and we'll just have a quick look at that pole only because I do think it's interesting to see just how big it is and how well it's thriving in your garden. I bet it just blows people's minds, doesn't it, when they first come in here? <laughs> and yeah, people, some people can't find us and they think that we're an actual yeah. garden centre or they don't realise we're just on a normal housing oh, yeah. estate. And then when they look up and they see the big trees and then they come round the back, yeah. they can't believe it's here. No. But to us, we're used to it because we've been growing it for a few years, so... I, but I've got to say, when I've sort of put... I've just put the address in on, uh, well, Google, clicked on it, and as soon as I come around that corner and I saw the big track carpets, I knew straight away <laughs> which flag, one it was. And the flag helps when we've got flag up on an open day. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that as well. So this is the Paulonia up here. And it's one of those plants that when you see it in a pot in a small size, it might not instantly grab you. But if you put it in the ground, let it grow for maybe two or three years, don't chop it back. But then once it gets to a certain size, when the trunk gets to sort of like that, which isn't long because they, they do grow pretty quickly, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, very quick. At that point then, you coppice it back. And when, when do you tend to coppice it here? Sort of uh, late Probably winter. November time. Oh, so you do it like right at the start yeah. of winter. Got you. So you chop it back and then in spring, you'll see several buds appear. And if you just keep one, the idea is that the plant puts all its efforts into creating the biggest stem with the biggest leaves possible. And when you talk about big leaves, it's a massive plant. I bet it's one of those plants that like, you don't see in garden centers very often, but when people come around to your garden and see this, you know, jumping out in front of them, they just want to grow it, yeah. don't they? Not many people know about them. And when you Google the tree, it comes up with big trees with big purple flowers on. Got you. I've never had purple flowers on mine. I've heard it takes a few years. But yeah. if it had a flower, we'd be taking the flower off to encourage the bigger leaves. Got you. So, so yeah, if, if you leave these plants to grow as they want to, they do eventually form quite a big branching tree. Um, they grow very quickly. But as a tree, as they start to get bigger, these leaves do look more normal sized. And the purple flowers, as much as they're nice, that's not the reason you want to grow this, is yeah. it? Yeah, first seen that actually in a zoo. Yeah. And I were trying to Google lens. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And I'm thinking, what are these, these big yeah. flying saucer leaves? They must be hardy if they're in zoo because they don't really look after plants very well at zoos. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, so that was no my train of thought. So that's how I come to find it. Definitely. Well, I've got to say, I love the mixture here of sort of your entrepreneurialism, starting to sell the plants. I like how that business has taken off sort of organically. People have come to you for the plants and you've really grown into that. But also, I love the way that you can see the inspiration. You've got so many of these plants that have got that size now where they just have so much impact. It, it really is amazing. I bet you just blow people's minds when they just see so much color and so many big leaves. It really does look incredible. So I've got to say thank you very much for letting me have a look around. No, thank and you for visiting, appreciate it. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. It really was a privilege to spend some time with someone who's very passionate about growing exotic plants. And her garden, so unexpected, as you walk around the corner of the house, see these huge jungle plants towering over you, it really is something special. I'll put a link to their site in the description below. You should definitely check it out. And if you live in the Yorkshire area, certainly make a point of popping over, see the garden, find out what plants can really thrive in your area. And I'm sure, I'm very sure, you'll be persuaded to buy a plant or two while you're there. So thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you all. I'll see you in the next video. See you later.